Cool. I'll do my intro then too. Um, and then I'll cut up as we need to. I forgot about the clap. Nope, you're good. I got you. Oh, okay. I got All you. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's our intro. Hey, I'm Brandon Williams from uh, the mountains up in Colorado. Hey friends, I'm Lilo Santos. I'm with the Governor's Office of Information Technology and I work on the Google team. And welcome to Intentionally Left Blank. And this week, uh, I'm super excited because we're getting the band back together. Um, we've got Travis Tiller uh, from the state of Colorado and uh, Travis, Lilo, and I all lived in the same room for about five years as the state's Google team. I'm super jazzed to, to get back together with Lilo and Travis, but also to hear, because Travis has moved on to, to bigger and better things, and I uh, hear what he's breaking these days. And like Brandon said, I'm also super pumped to have uh, the band back together, uh, where we get to talk to Travis Tiller, um, who, um, like Brandon said, has moved on to a totally different role, um, something totally awesome, and uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna ask a bunch of questions about it, and hopefully learn some cool things. Travis, thanks for uh, spending some time with us. Um, you know, it's been it's, I mean, we've spent literally forever together. It feels like. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just. It's a family reunion, basically. So kind of is. That's exactly yeah. what it feels like. Um, so, uh, so for those of you that don't know uh, who you are, why don't you tell us about um, your current role as a, a senior solutions engineer um, and kind of what that means for the state? So I'm a senior solution engineer, like Lilo said, for the state of Florida's governor's office of information technology. What that actually means is that I help the state from the enterprise level, so statewide all the way down to the frontline teams, identify the best technology paths to solve the challenges that are facing them. In practice, what it actually means is just trying to drag government forward, kicking and screaming while trying to make government actually do and be better. Dude, it's very cool. And you get to see all aspects of the departments, the workflows and government. So uh, I'm curious, what are you working on right now that you are excited about? What, what are you waking up and uh, breaking and fixing these days? Yeah, so one of the things that is actually taking up an increasing amount of time as we move forward is actually a really cool project. And it's only cool because of the pain point that it represents for us in public sector. And that is the Colorado Department of Human Services efforts to actually get a handle on their Microsoft Access applications and databases. Not only identifying everything across all of their various divisions that exists, but also a path forward. A lot of them are on legacy, and by legacy I mean end of life in some cases, for versions of uh, Microsoft Access that need to be identified to either upgrade or in a lot of cases migrate to different targets. So whether that's another low code solution like AppSheet, you know, something a little bit more robust like an actual custom app, and even identifying things that various teams and divisions are using access for that could actually be more of an agency-wide application. Great uh, example of that is actually their granular time tracking. Every division has their mm. own little access application that does granular time tracking for them. Um, it's anecdotally been a need that they've heard about for many, many years, but the reality of it is that it's a lot wider spread even than they knew. Uh, and it is actually an agency-wide concern and an agency-wide need that's likely going to end up being a standalone application for all of the divisions to use instead of having these little piecemeal things. We just celebrated about the one-year anniversary of an awesome text-to-speech tool for the Department of Revenue. Their DMV teams, specifically around Drives training, so Drives is our licensing and title system, and the Department of Revenue does training for this. What this tool actually enables them to do is take scripts for their training and turn them into audio files. What this actually means is whether it's the entire training or just sections of the training, they can just upload the script, spits out a usable and repeatable voice file that they can then just drop in to replace that segment. So it makes it very lightweight, very easy to use. The tool itself is awesome. While Drives and DMV are the only ones using it at present, the way that it's designed is actually to scale out. It's built on Google Cloud Platform's Firebase, 
and is actually designed to scale out to any number of users across any agency. So really excited about that. It's hard cost savings for them from a time standpoint and also from a voice talent standpoint. So it's been really, really cool to see that uh, kind of hit that one year mark. Another really cool thing that actually just recently deployed is for Department of Revenue's Marijuana Enforcement Division. What this new application is actually designed to do is take different uh, data systems and actually pipe them into a single repository. The really cool part about this is that it's designed to scale out. So as they add additional data sources, it all pipes in. And this is just the first step. What they're really trying to go for in the long term is actually a full seed to sale system. They'll actually be able to track marijuana from grow to packaging, to shipment to the dispensary, to endpoint sale to a member of the general public. What this really means is they'll be able to run various machine learning models against the centralized data to be able to flag any incongruencies, potentiality for fraud, for further investigation, really removing that manual need to actually go through the data, do specific queries and things like that, that may or may not capture everything that's being recognized by the system or potentially recognized by the system. The really cool thing that we're actually moving forward with right now is the new normal. As things get back to the quote unquote new normal from our experience with COVID this past year, going on year and a half, is how do we go back to work? How do we go physically back into the offices and, and public sector specifically having offices that do need to be open, that have critical services, that you know we have employees that may need or want to be uh, physically on premises for any number of reasons. And the challenge is how do we get there? So what we're actually doing right now is a pilot that is all about workspace management. What it really boils down to is hoteling. How do I book space at my agency? You know, how do I book a workspace at my agency so that I can come in, I can even agree that, you know, I'm not symptomatic, I agree to the acceptable use of this location, and go in, do my work day in office, and leave. And actually be able to book that, book it recurring, however I want to. Right now, it's very much looking at, you know, I can book space at my agency, you know, over the horizon, the absolute moonshot on this is actually being able to book space anywhere. So whether, you know, I'm closest to human services or I'm closest to public health or, or whomever's office, I can actually book space there. We're not quite sure if we're going to get there because of some of the other logistical challenges associated with it, but that's the moonshot. That's the dream. We're hoping that it hits the moonshot, recognizing that it might not. But as we move forward into the new normal, it's it's going to be a necessity. Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. I mean, all that stuff sounds really cool. I mean, that's all wildly impactful stuff, which is incredible. So now kind of shifting towards like the future, like using your, um, you know, your SE telescope, right? What uh, what do you see over the horizon as, as future targets or innovations for um, either for you as an SE or for uh, just the government as a whole? Being an SE is definitely a, a unique perspective. Unfortunately, they didn't give me a, a crystal ball, but my magic eight ball basically just says it's time to call it a day, but that's all right. <laughs> no, it's, you know, one of the biggest things that we're seeing uh, right now at kind of a, a grander level is data and what data actually means. You know, it, obviously there's a lot of buzz happening around big data and this realization from within government that we're very data rich and very information poor. People all the way from frontline staff to managers, senior managers, even directors are coming to us and saying, look, we have all of this data. We want to actually do some cool stuff with it. What do we do with it? You know, one of the biggest challenges facing us is machine learning in relation to big data. Um, so a lot of it is actually also level setting with expectations because people will come to us and say, hey, this is a lot of data. This is awesome. We want to do machine learning with it when it, in all actuality, it may not be a good candidate for it. So I think there is a challenge built in with that, with government to not only recognize um, that we have data that we can use, that we can do impactful things with if we know how to analyze it 
but we can't be setting the expectation that we know that it's going to be machine learning or we know that it's going to be algorithmic or we know it's going to be query based because the data hasn't told us yet because we don't know, necessarily know what data we have what's going to be the best way to actually interact with it but that is the direction that we're going and it's actually really exciting right now our chief data officer is working with the agencies and working within uh, the office of information technology here to kind of drive the discussions around what data strategy looks Looks like and how the agencies, how the divisions, and how the state as a whole can actually leverage our data in actual meaningful and impactful ways for people and for employees. The frontline staff um, asking more and more for tools that enable them to do their job better. It's a, a common theme among the team here that uh, for many, many years we've We've been the proponents of a lot of uh, kind of off the wall and off the shelf tools that enable and empower end users. And what we're actually seeing is a little bit more earnest, more legitimate requests around them, right? They're actually coming to OIT as the centralized OIT provider and asking for these tools. It's one of those things where we have to recognize that these are needs. The idea behind just being able to leverage something simple and straightforward, you know, it's it's really moving towards, and so some of the more forward thinkers are really moving towards the idea of user, enable, user enablement and that judicious application of technology as enablement to do things better, to make government better, and not just technology for the sake of technology, and not just building and, and buying these 800 pound gorillas just because you can and because they check the most boxes, um, and actually, empowering users to kind of be captains of their own destiny uh, as much as we can and actually trying to navigate uh, public sector procurement and legal and contracts while being sensitive to that. It presents a very real challenge and it's one that we are constantly evolving with and constantly fighting as we kind of start listening honestly to what our users and what the the frontline staff is at, are actually saying that they need you know and even more so um, what we're hearing at all levels is something that we're hearing even on the public side of things around accessibility and accessibility is of course one of the cornerstones of our current governor governor polis's um, efforts around technology and just government in general is making it accessible and when we think of accessibility and from a very here and now standpoint it's very much around compliances things very focused on disability uh, accessibility what we're starting to see some of that shift towards as the conversation shifts as a society is actually towards uh, universality and through the lens of equity. So for those in public health, this sounds very, very familiar, uh, is the idea of technology equity. So instead of health equity, it's technology equity to ensure that things are actually usable by anyone, regardless of education level, regardless of culture, regardless of background, that we are truly moving towards services for everyone. Uh, regardless of, of who they are or where they might be. Dude, that is incredible. I mean, yeah, that is so exciting, the stuff that you're working on, but really peering over the horizon and really nailing some of that. Um, I, All I could think of a couple of times during that is we've come a long way since us three stood in front of a department and said, so this is Google Drive and these are Google Forms. And you can have people fill out the information. We are, we are thankfully headed in the right direction. That is super exciting and amazing. And I can't wait to hear what's coming next. Yeah, um, definitely. And uh, just again, want to thank you for your time um, and all of your insights today, Travis. And I mean, it's always it's always a blast to catch up with literally the three of us because this is you know this is this is home pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It, it, exactly. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like sitting at the same table again. I mean, just like we did for all those years. I mean, to to be fair, we we are on Twitter direct messages with each right. other all day, every day, weekends, nights, uh, stuff like that. So it's really just time to actually see each other's faces. Accurate. Yeah. So no, it was awesome. I really appreciate you guys having me, and I love to Dude, actually hear about all the stuff that you guys are breaking and. You know, I can't. and see where we can partner on it.
So one, I think it's fascinating to hear what Travis is doing and how much more advanced it is now from where we actually started. Um, you know, but I, I think what jumped out at me this week um, compared to last week was last week we talked to a, a deputy county manager in a rural county in Colorado. Right. This week we talked to a solution engineer, a senior solution engineer at the state of Colorado. And of all the points that they had to make and all the things that they were thinking about, two of them were similar. Both of them yep. targeted the challenge of getting uh, workers back into the office, um, how to look at hoteling, remote work, what does the future office space look like with an idea of how do we reduce our footprint, do cost savings, stuff like that. I, I thought that was fascinating. Um, I thought the other one that was really fascinating was both of them are thinking about um, inclusion, equity issues, and really where do um, you know, the need to communicate, the need for access to information, um, how do we in government democratize access to information mm -hmm. outside of just yep. the traditional notions of accessibility, that accessibility is expanding to include that. I, I, I find that really inspiring and powerful um, from from those two different, it tells me that there's huge trends going on here that, that I think we can really make a lot of progress to mm -hmm. on. Um, you know, as far as the three takeaways that I had th this this week from what Travis said, um, obviously doubling down on considered use of technology to reach all of the populations and make sure that people have equal access to the information from government, whether that's using, you know, things like voice to text, which you mentioned um, in a training capacity, but really kind of thinking about bringing those tools into uh, helping get information out to the public and people that we serve. Sure. Um, so democratization and access to information. I think the second one was really, you know, something where I'm, I'm really keen on uh, is on cost efficiencies that come from rethinking the way in which government works, reducing our footprint, yes. reducing our complexity, <laughs> yes. and increasing people's happiness in their jobs by being able to have time at home, time at work, and more of a work-life blend and, and managing government in that same way that really meets, you know, uh, happiness levels of, of people working. And, and it's cool to see that they're thinking about that at that level. I think the third thing um, that was different that I didn't expect, um, but I'm also really interested in because we all struggle with it, um, is third party applications. When Travis started talking about program management tools, right-sizing tools for the actual challenge that uh, government is facing in these little niches, and not designing the the, the one-size-fits-all solution, because we know it doesn't. We've done it time and time again. Um, I thought it was really interesting, and nobody really mm -hmm. owns that space in government. There's this weird area of third-party applications, web tools, and nobody's really stepped forth to either guide people or own that area. And, it, and it's it's kind of a third rail, and I think it's really interesting that he's stepping in. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, like, every point that you bring up is, is spot on, even with me, like with, uh, I mean, it, it's been cool. I mean, even for me, right? Like, so when we were working together, right? Like you, you were the top dog, right? And then Travis and I reported to you. Um, but I mean, even at that level and then seeing kind of how Travis has evolved and progressed into, into this SE role has been just mind blowing. Mind I mean, it's just, it's been like the Crazy. perfect fit for yeah. him. Um, um, yeah, it is. So, and then like for, for my, for my three points, I think, um, the, the whole third party thing that you were just talking about, like that's, I mean, that's so big because we've got such a, there is yeah. an issue <laughs> with, with overspend, right? I mean, yeah. we, we buy these tools that, um, equate to like 20% use or 80% use for like 20% population right um right what we yeah. should be focusing on and what travis was kind of alluding to is more like boutique type solutions where you've got like okay well this team mm. only needs like the small version of project management or this team needs like a more medium-sized project mm -hmm. manager um things like that I, I mean i think things like i mean there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipe you mentioned monday but there's also like like tables is a good one right where you can format and use tables as yeah, project right. management and not have to buy like the 800 pound gorilla that he was talking about 
Right. Um, and proliferate. Exactly. Those. You know, being able to find ones at work and re replicating that through other government programs. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, the second one for me was uh, the the MS access issue. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty prolific. It's uh, <laughs> in my time here at the state, I've I've seen that MS access has been one of those situations that has just been that's kind of like had a lot of uncontrolled sprawl. Um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of those are sure. totally necessary and are completely justified in their need, but there's yeah. probably, a, a, to a lesser degree, some that are completely unnecessary. <laughs> um, and being yeah. able to kind of like pair that back for one agency to help do uh, like cost efficiencies. And um, I mean, even like tech debt, right? Like that's, that's one of those things that where you could just really just trim off a ton mm. from tech debt. Um, and then yeah. the last thing for me was um, the marijuana enforcement division, right? So um, coming in as, <laughs> as you know, the, the state that's legalized marijuana and kind of how we've been trying to regulate and, and monitor that stuff, um, having a full stack system that goes from seed to sale um, to track it from in every step, I think is huge. And I mean, there might be other states that are trying to yeah. do it, but I think like we could all kind of learn to do this together, seeing as how a lot of places are starting to step into this um, new frontier in, in marijuana enforcement, right? So um, I think those are like the big, yeah. the big three things for me uh, from Travis's uh, Travis's information. So well, that's cool. Yeah, I, I there was so much packed into that. I'm probably gonna have to watch it a couple of times uh, just to actually uh, pull apart some of those. And I've definitely got some follow up questions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, for Travis, but yeah, really cool to get everybody back together. And uh, yeah, it was yeah awesome. good times, man, good times. Hey, thank you so much for joining us um, and uh, looking forward to even more discussions with cool people in government doing cool things. Um, thanks. So yeah, thanks so much for watching uh, this, this episode. If you wanna keep the discussion going, uh, you can find us in the community of interest section under the public sector community. Um, you can also just throw the comments um, down below uh, any questions or comments you might have for Travis and uh, we look forward to talking with you and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Want to further the, the <laughs> God. That's not even a word. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, I saluted. <laughs> that was awesome. I guess I'm going to have to keep that in there <laughs> that now. That was great. Yeah, you have to.